Okay. And that leads us to our guest speaker, which is Amanda speaking on the scene. Hello, so I'm going to be talking about the Essene Church of Christ tonight, and uh, there's a lot to it, but I think I'm just going to cover the background tonight, and we'll see how far we get. So, um, it's the Nazarene religion of the Essene way, and it was created, established by God and Goddess in the Garden of Eden. So um, it's basically been around throughout existence, um, whether it's been underground for the majority of it, oh, but it's been there, whether we are even aware of it or not. And uh, a lot of it is inside that we know to be true as well. Um, there was a fall of mankind in the garden uh, due to Luciferian attacks. And uh, basically they needed a plan so that we could still realign with God and Goddess. And so the Lord and Lady Christ arranged that the Nazarene religion of the Essene uh, way be a bright light that continued in this dark world. And so uh, they were the spiritual elders of humanity in a way, in that they preserved and they taught the ways of Christ um, throughout Earth's time, basically. And it's the earliest, most um, spiritual form of Judaism, but they also are Christians because they're following Christ at that time. And so in the book of Genesis, uh, we find out that this is one of countless worlds in one ovum, and that Jah and Jala, which is God, Goddess, gave the Lord and Lady Christ um, instructions to establish the Christ family. And these would be people all over the world um, and they're known by different names in different worlds. And uh, they basically, their mission is to be hands of mercy. And they uh, basically have always existed so that we can find our way back to God and Goddess and what those natural uh, ways are being in harmony. So Nazarene in Hebrew means rise up, as in spiritual ascension. And a scene, Asaya, is the Aramaic word for healer, healing. Um, the common people, wherever they were, for, referred to them as the healers. The Therapotica in Egypt. Um, the Jewish historian Josephus noted that they lived to be over 100 years old, commonly, when most people were 45 years old. Um, they were known to be holistic healers of the mind, body, and soul. So they healed all parts. Um, they had a vegetarian diet, and this was because God and Goddess decreed that humans uh, live off the fruit and seeds of the earth and not eat flesh. And so this is part of the reason why they've been able to live long periods of time. Um, the Essene Jews had a vegetarian version of the Bible, of the Old Testament, um, but it was far less bloody than the mainstream Judaism. So they were, they were called heretics, they were persecuted because they didn't support animal sacrifices and eating animals. And they were also persecuted and angered people because they worshipped a god and goddess equally. And the other thing that really pissed people off is that women were in the priesthood. And so, <laughs> you know, throughout ages uh, in our patriarchal society, they've kind of been on the, at the wayside. Um, but an angel told the Nazarenes that the prophecy would be fulfilled, that Lord and Lady Christ would come to earth, and through them they would make this happen if they prepared for seven generations uh, in order to make it possible for that much divinity to be in a physical body. <coughs> so they did this, and in Israel, um, Mary, Mother Mary gave birth to Jesus, Yeshua, in a Essene community, and in Ethiopia, the seen women gave birth to Mary Magdalene. Uh, Miriam was her Hebrew name. And um, basically, they, they spread their message. Um, and the Nazarenes, the people that hold these truths and teachings and scrolls, they consider themselves to be the authentic holders. Um, they believe that they are the authorized custodians of the 
true teachings of Lord and Lady Christ. And many called them heretics because, like we said, that they uh, were vegetarian, they worshipped a god and goddess, and they allowed women into the priesthood. Um, so Peter actually kept to the vegetarian diet, but he threw out the, uh, the women aspect. And then Paul came along and he threw out vegetarianism and the female mother worship. So what we have today of Christianity is actually very convoluted and diluted of the original teachings. And so I think that's why many people are like, oh, I kind of was Christian, but I spread from it because what I was hearing in my church didn't ring true in my heart. So, um, But there have been preserved ways of, of being, and uh, I just want you guys to know that. This is like the time that they're coming out, and they say this is the day of restoration. This is when um, there will be peace on earth. Um, it will be an ecological time, this new age that we're going through. It will be a shift in spiritual consciousness. It will be a time when we are reliant on our solar power energy much more. Um, if we have ecological collapse, then the ecological collapse leads to economic collapse. We are seeing this um, with our oil spills. We are seeing this with the limited fish. We are seeing this all over. And if we have economic collapse, we have social political collapse. We are seeing this with Occupy. We are seeing this with protests in Cairo. And if we have social political unrest, then we have chaos and we have war. So really, it's up to us to how, how much of a degree, how rough this transition is. And it all depends on how we treat the earth. It all depends on our choices, the products we use. Um, there is countless evidence. I'm not going to go into the numbers tonight, but the evidence of the energy it takes to produce um, meat versus a vegetarian diet is huge. It's absolutely staggering the ratio of protein and nutrients lost from when you filter it through a cow. You know, you think about it, the cow is eating all of your nutrients and you're eating the cow so you can get those nutrients. It's, it's not the right system for humans. Um, so that's one of their big things. And they have a mystery religion that has seven levels. And so like the basis is like vegetarianism mother goddess um, as well as father god and um, and lord and lady christ and there have been really many reincarnations uh, throughout the um, the church and that people felt a calling to to make it their mission to make this church alive to keep it coming um, the current founder is in Oregon they have a garden of peace and his teacher was a Lebanese-born American who had gone back to the Middle East and learned from his master. And then he came to, back to America when he died, to, to um, when his master died, to teach someone that would pass on his lineage. And so he came through San Diego legally as an illegal immigrant, and he found a rundown hotel, and he made a garden out of it. And there was beautiful fruit trees, there was patches of veggies and sacred symbols, um, there was beautiful blossoming trees, streams, and basically he taught him for seven years, and there was a bunch of traveling hippies that would come and go, but uh, Nazareth was the only one that stayed for those seven years to complete the courses. So he carried on the tradition, and uh, soon after that the land was sold, and he felt he could die, so Malchali died, leaving it in Nazareth's hands. So now there's a church in Oregon up by Florence. Um, you guys can visit it if you want. And yeah, what else is there? Question? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Um, the uh, scenes that you're talking about, are these the Dead Sea Scroll of scenes? Or uh, like a group that modeled itself kind of after them? or? Um, so they there are some groups that claim to be these scenes, um, but oftentimes they have no actual scrolls or they don't even have a meeting place. It's just based on like history, like hearsay, like, oh, I'm a Gnostic because I read Gnostic scriptures kind of thing. But these have actually been scrolls intact, like passed down. I see. And so that
that is why they believe that they're the official custodians. And it also <laughs> doesn't have anything to do with the Nazarene Church? No, it also has nothing to do with the Nazarene okay. Church. Okay, just checking. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's very confusing. It's those good <clears throat> questions. Um, there's, there's the book of um, 12, the Holy 12, which is based on the, the Holy 12 disciples. And then there's the Garden, or the Book of Peace, which is like a four-set book. Um, yeah, so their initiation, basically to become a member, you go through two courses. One is about like an introduction to their history, and then the second course is on um, membership. And their initiation is a baptism in water. And their um, mystery school is the Essene Academy of Higher Learning. So I thought that was kind of cool that it was stored in Manibu, you know, keeping on the learning process. Yeah, I think that's all I wanted to talk about tonight. Yeah. Thank you.